now is retired SWAT commander Ray Shea. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, you're welcome. So I, I guess first thing off the bat, what is, is the tactic that, that some of these first responders are, are, are thinking about when they're going into a situation like this? Well, over the years, we've learned that the most important thing is stop the shooter. Stop the threat as quickly as you can. And that makes a tough decision for law enforcement because they might have to run past people that are down, shot, because they need to stop the threat. And they were faced a very difficult situation last night, especially the nighttime, 400 feet above you is an elevated position. The shooter had two different locations he can fire from. And the problem was, I suspect, is identifying where those threats were coming from. And that's what put the big challenge. Because with that big suite that he has, he could mm -hmm. step back. He could step back to where he won't see a muzzle flash outside of the room. So law enforcement was trying valiantly to identify that threat. Let's, you mentioned the suite, so let's roll that video, guys. Uh, we actually have video that someone sent in to us. This is not the exact suite, but this is two floors up. So give us an idea of the advantage that he had with a room like this and the windows facing many different sides. What it does is it has multiple shooting portals to attack the crowd. Uh -huh. So you have a peaceful crowd down below, and the shooter is in an elevated position. He can step back away from the window to where you may not see a muzzle flash, mm -hmm. and all the poor victims on the concourse down below, they just see the effects of the rounds being fired at them. And the weapons they likely used, those weapons frequently have a effective range 800 yards, almost up to 1,000 yards. That's 10 football fields. Oh. But uh, it's a very heartbreaking and challenging situation for all the law enforcement. They're, they're, they're programmed and they're destined to save lives. Mm -hmm. So for them to experience this and experience that loss of life, that is something that is extremely difficult to manage and that's something they'll deal with forever. Yeah. Um, let's talk about security. I think nowadays we're all so used to heightened security when you're going into events like this, but in this situation, he was not subject to any of those security checks. So how, as we move forward, d do people feel any sense of safety? You know, law enforcement is very good at adapting and making changes to make sure people are safe. Yeah because that's why they're out there. So they will look at ways of target hardening. For example, the hotels, you'll probably see them tighten up in those areas. What bags are coming in? Is there a check system for bags coming in? Increased security in that regard. Training, uh, communication, and you have multiple law enforcement agencies and first responders, paramedics, firefighters, all of them work together. So all those officers and those first responders did an outstanding job. And I know that's hard for them to realize that they did the best they could and there was such a loss of life. And so that is just one of the challenges of law enforcement. Presents such a new and huge challenge all the way around. Rache, we always appreciate your insight. You Thank you so much for being here.